By the way, any time that, that someone tells you the unborn is a human but not a person, I'm going to make you guys into pro-life ninjas right now. Are you ready? Uh, what's the difference between a human and a person? I just gave you a question to ask pro-choicers next time they tell you the human, the unborn is not a person. Any difference they give you between the human and the person is a difference shared amongst all born people as well. So this is the problem in grounding human rights in things that come in varying degrees rather than our human nature. Oh, the baby's smaller, less developed, located elsewhere and more dependent. You hear those arguments? Smaller, less developed, so they don't have certain abilities yet, in a different environment, the womb, and more dependent on the mom. They can't survive without the mom, so it's not a person. But I'm six foot three, and men are generally larger than women. That doesn't make us more valuable than women. My father's more developed than me. In fact, my wife recently found out that men don't reach their mental peak until their 40s. And she was like, hallelujah, Jesus. She's really holding out hope for me. I didn't know what to make with that statement, so maybe you can pray for my marriage. My point is this, there are aspects of my mental development I have not realized yet in virtue of not being 40. But does that mean I'm not a, a whole person now? No, you see these cognitive abilities and functions come in varying degrees. But pro-choicers have always denied the unborn rights of personhood by saying that they haven't reached certain developmental markers in their development. But we all differ on the tick mark that we find ourselves on the continuum of human development. 